can get a little more in there. Of course, who knows what will happen next. In Clark's lab, we're really interested in the way that synapses communicate. Ready? Yep. Go. Specifically, the synapses between nerves and muscle cells. Nice. <laughs> There's a special quality that some people have, and I've only known a few scientists who actually have this, is a sort of an uncanny intuition, maybe, um, of sort of just knowing what the good questions are and really how to go about asking them. Um, that special intuition, if you will, or that, that skill that really is only seen in, in my experience in the very best scientist is something that Zach had. And I think he had it when he came to Grinnell. It was just fun to watch him ex develop that and, and develop some of his other abilities while he was here. Oh, that's beautiful. Okay, and then 200. Wow. The cool thing is with these experiments, the results are um, you actually watch these nerves kind of light up basically under the microscope. And the first time that that happened, oh, it was it was a spectacular moment. Oh, yeah. That, that's when I knew we were kind of onto something. Okay, yeah, let's do that. And so Clark and I developed some new techniques um, and that really made some of these other experiments that had previously not been possible, but we, we made them work. 150, yeah. yeah. I think we're the first to demonstrate the cannabinoids that we study are actually involved, um, very importantly, in the synapse. And so um, I guess in that way we kind of have helped, you know, turn the table a little bit on the field. And actually some people in the field were very skeptical and still are kind of skeptical, but we have definitely have enough data now that really supports our bigger hypothesis. Really could not have asked for a better person to, you know, kind of help, you know, start my scientific career. So how many people are there now? I just, I can't imagine another place where, you know, you get such dedication from a, a, a faculty member to help, you know, so thoroughly with the project. You are actually going to measure the voltage across these cell membranes and then see how that voltage changes when the neurons are talking. Well, if I had a hill cell the faculty here have been working and changing our curriculum in somewhat non-traditional ways, trying to make the science education process as realistic as possible, as genuine as possible. We try to give students experience of what it's like to be a scientist, which basically means you're faced with some big unknowns, some big questions, and your job is to figure out how to, how to tackle those questions. And so they carry out the experiments, they analyze the data, and then they present it um, in the forms that scientists traditionally use, including uh, the scientific paper, but also the poster presentation format, which most of us use at our professional meetings. And, you know, really, they, they act as scientists. Okay, so let's look at that experiment we did. Yeah, yeah let's yeah. look interesting. My sophomore year, I was able to go with um, our lab and present a poster at the big National Neuroscience Convention. Um, that was my first real experience, kind of getting out there in a, kind of a professional atmosphere. The next year after that, we came up with a lot of a lot more experiments, and we were working on a manuscript at the time. And uh, we actually took another poster, and this was just Clark and I took a poster to uh, the neuroscience convention. This was had a lot more a lot more new um, and cool experiments that I had done, um, and so we presented it again and got some good feedback from a lot of the um, people in the field. And these are big names uh, in the cannabinoid field that we you know as we were talking to. Really. I came back from uh, yeah. from class one day and Clark had sent me an email. He's like, guess what? We're getting published. And I was like, oh my gosh, <laughs> this is awesome. And so that was kind of the, the culmination of a lot of work and kind of the, definitely one of the highlights of my college career when I found that out. Well, interestingly, Zach, he could have gone to graduate school right out of college. Um, clearly would have gotten into one of the best programs that, that he had desired. But he picked a, a lab at NIH where um, they have a special post-baccalaureate program. It just seemed, you know, like the perfect, the perfect choice for me. He picked the anthrax lab because he just thought it was the most interesting lab and the, and the questions they were approaching were the ones that he found most interesting for the time. The work I'm doing right now um, is definitely um, has the potential to be, you know, fairly influential. We'll see if that, that happens. Um, 
you know, we're working in a pretty hot field these days, but you know, you can definitely see that Grinnell trained us well. All my classes definitely taught me how to think like a scientist, how to write like a scientist, how to plan experiments like a scientist, and I think that that shows a lot out here um, in this atmosphere. So I picture Zach will probably spend a couple of years at this NIH program, then he'll go to graduate school. Who knows what field he'll pick. I wouldn't even pretend I could project with any confidence where that will go um, because he's the kind of person who will, who will just follow where the most interesting and the most potentially productive areas of, of investigation will be and will find himself in a place where he'll make some great contributions, I think.